Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about standard, extended, and named ACLs. And we're going to start looking deeper into the syntax of our access control lists. So you saw the slide in the last lecture. That's the format of the command when we're building our ACLs. At global config, we start with access list, and then we have a number for the access list. The different numbers, if it's numbered from 1 to 99, it's an IP standard access list. If it's from 100 to 199, then it's an extended list. And we'll get to the expanded in a second. So the original implementation was standard and extended numbered ACLs. Standard ACLs reference the source address only. So that's all that the router is caring about when it processes the ACL is the source address. It's not looking at the destination address, the protocol, the port number, anything like that. Extended ACLs are more granular, however. They don't just check the source address, they can also check the protocol the protocol, like is it TCP or UDP, the destination address, and the port number. So you just saw in the last slide, the ranges for this are, if it's numbered from 1 to 99, it's always a standard ACL. If you number it from 1 to 99, you can't put information in there like the destination IP address. If it's numbered from 100 to 199, it's always an extended ACL, which does allow you to put in the more granular information. Now, Cisco improved this later on. So that was the original implementation, was standard was from 1 to 99, extended was from 100 to 199. Now, it's not likely, but it is possible in really large environments like service providers, and if they've got lots of sub-interfaces, that they could run out of ACL numbers. So a normal enterprise, this wouldn't happen, but it is feasible. So because of this, Cisco expanded the range and standard is now not just 1 to 99 they also included 1300 to 1999 as well so you can use any of those numbers for a standard ACL the extended ACL numbers were also expanded as well it doesn't just include 100 to 199 it also includes 2000 to 2699 as well now so here's an example of a standard ACL. We've got access list 1 deny 10.10.10.10 So the wildcard mask here would mean that we're just looking for the particular host 10.10.10.10 And then the second line is access list 1 permit 10.10.10.0 255 So what this ACL is doing is it's denying the one particular host 10.10.10.10 it's permitting everything else on the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 network the default wildcard mask for a standard acl is 0.0.0.0 so this is a wildcard so that would equate to a subnet mask of 255.255.255.255 meaning it's an individual host address so if we look back we said the first line access list one deny 10.10.10.10 .10 .10 .10 .10 because 0.0.0.0 is the default, we could have just said access list 1 deny 10.10.10.10. Means the same thing. Don't forget to enter the wildcard when you're specifying an IP subnet though, not just an individual host. The command line will allow you to enter the command, for example, access list 1 deny 10.10.10.0 with no wildcard mask. But this obviously would not match anything then and it would be an error. 
So for when you are specifying a subnet, I'll go back a slide again. The second line was access list one permit 10.10.10.0.0.0.255. Remember to put the wildcard mask in when you're specifying a subnet or it's going to default to a slash 32 and it's not going to work. Okay, so that was a standard ACL where we're just looking at the source address. With an extended ACL, we can have much more granular information in there. So an example of an extended ACL, again at global config, we've said access list 100, deny TCP from 10.10.10.10, wildcard mask 0.0.0.0, so we're looking for the host, where the source port number is greater than 49151, going to a destination address of 10.10.50.10 .10 with a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.0, so looking for the host again, and equals a destination port number of 23. Telnet, which you'll also learn about later, uses 23 as its destination port. So this would be denying Telnet traffic from the host 10.10.10.10 .10 going to the host 10.10.50.10. .10 .10. Then the next line, access list 100 permit TCP 10.10.10.0 with a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255. Source port is greater than 49151. Going to a destination host of 10.10.50.10 .10 equals Telnet. So this is a very similar example to the standard ACL that we had before. But the standard ACL was just saying block all traffic from 10.10.10.10 .10 .10 .10 .10 and allow everything from the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 subnet. Here we're getting more granular. We're saying it's not just all traffic coming from there, it's telnet traffic which is going to a particular host. Okay, so those were examples of standard and extended ACLs. The extended ACL does not have a default wildcard mask. So the standard ACL, the default wildcard mask is a slash 32, 0.0.0.0. The extended does not have a default. So if you put in an extended ACL and you don't specify the wildcard mask, it will give you an error message. So you can see that's what I did here. I said access list 150, deny TCP 10.10.10.10, .10 and then I went straight onto the source port without specifying the wildcard mask. If you do that, the command line will throw back an error saying that there's invalid input. It shows you where it's because I didn't enter the wildcard. Okay, so that was standard and extended ACLs. The last type of ACL we have was another improvement. So originally we had standard ACLs, then we had extended ACLs, then standard and extended, the ranges were expanded, and then after that named ACLs came out. So you can now reference an ACL either by a number or by a name. Named ACLs begin with the command IP access list at global config instead of access list, which is for numbered ACLs. So if we go to global config, we say IP access list and then a question mark to check the syntax. The next command we say whether this is going to be an extended or a standard ACL. The syntax for named ACLs is very similar, but slightly different with numbered ACLs. So let me show you the numbered ACL again. With the numbered ACL, it always starts with access list and then the number, and then it's going to be a deny entry or a permit entry. With named ACLs, the syntax is a little bit neater and tidier. So it starts IP access list, then you say whether it's standard or extended, and then you give it a name. Here I've named it Flatbox Demo. Then you say your, your entries. So I've denied 10.10.10.10, I've permitted 10.10.10.0, So when you use a named ACL, when you put the first line in, when you create the named ACL, it then goes into a submenu where you configure the rules in that ACL. When you do a numbered ACL, it's different in that you always do it at global config and you have to say access list and the number at the start every time. So very similar configuration, named ACL, it's the newer way of doing it. It's what's more commonly used now. It's a little bit tidier configuration. 
Okay, so that was our standard, our extended, our named ACL. So one other thing I want to tell you, I nearly forgot, is about that source port number because you were maybe wondering about that. So here's our extended access list example. And you can see in source port I've specified is greater than 49151. The reason I've used this is that with modern versions of Windows, like from Windows 7 and later, it uses a random source port number whenever it's sending traffic out, but it begins with the number 49152. It can be 49152 or higher than that, up to a certain number in the range. It used to be greater than 1024 with older versions of Windows like XP, but it's a bit of a higher number now. So I just thought I'd mention that in case you were wondering where that source port number came from. With the ACLs, it's not so common to care about the source port number because that can change, but the destination port number will be fixed based on the application. Okay, that's everything I needed to tell you in this lecture. See you in the next one where we'll start going through the rest of the syntax. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.